Well, you know who I am, right? I'm Herman Scuttle, and I'm here again, and I have a lot to say, and I'm saying it. First of all, I'll give you some of the uh, breaking news that's come across the wire. Um, a passenger on a plane taxiing at O'Hare Airport opened the emergency exit and jumped to the tarmac. The impatient man was immediately arrested. Police say the man had no baggage. Well, I, I, I misread that, so let me say that again, all right? Don't worry, it's fine. It'll still be good and it'll be legitimate. Hang on, hang on, I'm old, all right? I'm old and I'm in a dark room. Old and in a dark room. Wait till you get old and you're in a dark room. You'll stumble over your words too. Now I've got a lot to say and I'm saying it. <laughs> in the news, a passenger on a plane taxiing at O'Hare Airport, that's in Chicago, he opened the emergency exit and jumped to the tarmac. The impatient man was immediately arrested. Police say he had no luggage but he certainly was carrying a lot of baggage. <laughs> See? Okay. Now, also in the news, a North Carolina man named Paul Ufima. He set a world record by building a replica of the Titanic using 9,000 Lego pieces, and he did it all in 10 hours. In a related story, after 110 years, the swimming pool on the real Titanic is still full. And finally in the news, <clears throat> a French man named Francois Bibon gained international attention by bungee jumping from a bridge 765 times in one day. He didn't receive a prize but he was awarded a new name, Spastic on Elastic. So those are the news items that just crossed the wire, and I give them to you because, well, I like you. You're special. Anyway, forget all that. Listen to this. Uh, last night, there was some brassy inebriation noise on the street below my window, and it was infringing on my overnight quality of life. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, more, triggering me to become typically unmanageable. I jumped out of my bed, put on my sweatpants, ran downstairs and out the front door. Then I went nose to nose with a couple of chuckle-headed dipsticks, both under the influence of stupid. And they caught a good look of my bad look, my rage, my savagery, my old man prickliness. It was one second, two seconds, three seconds, and forget about it. They were gone, but they will recount my shock and awe theatrics for days to come. On the phone or on a bar stool or in their mother's basement, they'll be saying, oh my God, oh my God, it was like, wow, man, oh my God. As for me, I'll spend a week in shame. A week in shame trying to meditate and fast away my guilt. And I'll be shunned by my therapists and my gods. They'll all agree that I'm on my own. Once more, I've gone crazy and made a mess. So they'll pull down their shades, lock their doors, and they'll say, you crusty old fool, you've gotten yourself into an emotional jam again, but this time you got to get out of it yourself. Yes, I am sufficiently 
shamed. But also, <laughs> I'm very much amused. Hey, have you noticed all of those help wanted signs lately? Hundreds of them all over, help wanted, help wanted. They're everywhere. It seems like there's abundance of jobs available, including some very interesting ones, like surgeon wanted, experience needed, but you must have your own tools. S&M recruiters needed. You must be able to give rough estimates. Ranch hand wanted. Someone to grind or chew hay for a horse with bad teeth. Part-time head lice pullers. Call your local school district. Scarecrows wanted. Brains not necessary. A dead-end job. Long hours, low pay, no benefits, no advancement, and the boss is a jerk. Drowning man needs, uh, never mind. Well, yes, help wanted listings are in abundance these days. Meanwhile, I find the number of unemployed musicians to be very disconcerting. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm um, a, a bit of an oddity these days because I've, uh, I'm just, I just haven't caught up on technology. I just haven't caught up on the 21st century. I, I've never owned a smartphone. Uh, I've never owned an iPhone or none of those Hershey bar sized phones. It's been just me and my burner phone, my flip phone. Flip it up, flip it down. Size of my tongue. A phone strictly for making phone calls. Go figure. And I've never had a GPS, uh, no garage door opener, never took a polygraph, never had a pacemaker, no shock treatments, no appendicitis, no jock itch. I've never been mistaken for a luminary. Nobody ever mistook me for Dr. Phil or Willie Mays or Penelope Cruz. I never wore braces. I've never been decapitated. And places I've never been to, Modesto, California, Tunkhannock, Pennsylvania, Beaver Creek, Ohio, Bee Cave, Texas, Cement City, Michigan, all of those places I've never been to, but I have been to Key West, where I posed for a picture with Kanye West and Adam West and Cornell West and Oliver North and Clint Eastwood and Terry Southern. Yes, yes, yes. My life and times all recorded in my scrapbooks and journals and scribbled on cocktail napkins and my mental notes dictated into Memorex cassettes. But sadly, I caught the COVID and pleurisy and Bell's palsy and I fell in the bathtub and broke out in hives and my flip phone fell into my chicken soup. So nothing about anything is gonna matter anymore. Unless, unless that woman on the Tinder network decides to show up. I know, I know what you're thinking, I know what you're hoping for, and I have it. A song, a song for you, and I wrote it just last night. Well, I woke up this morning, you didn't pay me no mind. Yes, I woke up this morning, you didn't pay me no mind. 
Will you avoid me like a virus? And that is so unkind. You've been shunning me, baby. Leaving me in the lurch. You've been shunning me, baby. Leaving me in the lurch. You give me the cold shoulder, and don't you know that hurts? Well, I cook and clean, and I give you all of my pay. But when I need a little loving, you look the other way. Well, two can play this game of rebuff. I said to can play this game of rebuff. I'll just pretend to ignore you. I believe I had enough. I know. I know. I know. Well, you know, I said at the beginning that I have a lot to say. And I'm saying it, including this. The word on the street was that a heat wave was coming. Saturday and Sunday would register 90 degrees or better. So I figured I'd prepare for some seasonal torture. A couple of days of hazy, hot, humid weather some good, essential torture. You see, I've acclimated myself to the high heat in New England that comes in the springs and summers. I've adapted with my fans circulating hot air and distributing good, organic, atmospheric agony. And I say that uh, if the heat hasn't killed me through the years, there's proof that it's made me stronger. I'm telling you, I never had air conditioning in my place. Just the window open and two or three fans going. And that's always been my way. Although, once in a while I get reminded of enhanced discomfort in my advanced years. And then all of a sudden, my neighbor, Caparelli, he lives down the hall in apartment 313. He knocked on my door and he asked me if I wanted to borrow one of his AC units. He said, I got four of them. Well, I checked them out and I capitulated to Caparelli, but I bought the AC. I didn't borrow it. I paid him $45. And now the word on the street is that I have surrendered to technology and more or less acknowledged my old age. Old, yes, but I'm getting cooler by the minute. Uh, I'm thinking that you weren't with me, so let me tell you what you missed. Listen to me. It was the annual springtime bullfrog fest. Huh? It was officially known as the annual springtime Bullfrog Swamp Fest. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. It was happening on both sides of the Asha-Wiltecook Rail Trail in Cheshire. It was a dissonant reptilian croak chorus from thousands of oversexed frogs. Male frogs. The sound was like crisscross crossing bass lines from Jaco Pastorius, 
Esperanza Spaulding, Robbie Shakespeare, Carol Kay, John Entwistle, Stanley Clark, Getty Lee, all of them, all of them that sound together, all that bass line sound, the uh, gutturalizing resonance which rattled my brain pan. The low octave noodling pulsations worked like a defibrillator. It was loud and it was lascivious and it was coming from male frogs at high noon. And they had no distractions. They weren't bothered by the presence of me or the other hikers or bikers or rollerbladers or bird watchers or fugitives. Okay. There was one interruption. The cacophony stopped for a minute when a freak on a unicycle passed by, can of beer in one hand, a spliff in the other, and a boombox in his lap, and he was wearing only underpants. It was a moment of upstaging that put the amphibian mating ritual on pause. But before you could say goodbye pork pie hat, the raunchy soundtrack of the annual Bullfrog Swamp Fest got right back to the baseline basics. I'm reminded that uh, I have some correspondence here. It's not my favorite part, but I'll, uh, I'll share them with you. Correspondence. Somebody out there sending correspondence to me. Uh, the first one comes from Walter Doxyberg from West Stockbridge. He says, Herman, what kind of foods do you hate? I hate alphabet soup. It gives me a cramp in my vowels. Uh, Mary Beth Strumpet from Great Barrington asks, have you ever been to an acupuncturist? Yes, just once, but when I got home, my voodoo doll was dead. And uh, here's one from George Perplexity of Lennox. I'm thinking of running for political office. Any advice? Yeah. First, become a nudist. Then you'll have nothing to hide. Correspondence. Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, mm. Have you been to North Adams? North Adams, Massachusetts. Up that away. <laughs> I like it there. Um, yeah, North Adams is, is really quite a nice city, in my opinion. So, so don't you... Uh, don't you punch down on North Adams. Don't let me hear about that. Don't punch down on North Adams. It's a good place. I drive up there on Route 8 from Pittsfield. I go there to see my dentist. He's the best dentist I ever had. Dr. B. His office is on Ashland Street. Now, he's in his 70s, just like me. And we schmooze and we laugh and... <laughs> Sometimes he forgets to work on my teeth. On Friday, when I left Dr. B, I stopped at the North Adams Goodwill on State Street. Plenty of old odds and ends there calling to me, promising me a good cheap thrill. I found a really nice carved plaque depicting an African family having dinner. The inscription said, Lake Victoria, Uganda. 
I bought it. And uh, I couldn't pass up a, a battery-powered clock from the National Audubon Society showing an array of happy birds. Goodwill in North Adams. And uh, from their coffee mug shelf, you know, you go to the uh, Goodwill or a thrift store, and you'll always see a shelf with a lot of coffee mugs. I always buy one. And I selected a coffee mug there picturing John Wayne with his quote, life is tough, but it's tougher if you're stupid. Now across the street, if you've ever been to North Adams, there's the Goodwill and across the street, I saw the Key West Bar and Lounge. Then right next door, right next door, the State Street Tavern. And next door to that was Hooker Street. I'm not lying. You go up there, you'll see it. All of that was an inspiration for a lively itinerary some night. Of course, North Adams is still the same town where they have that clean, cultured mass mocha, an absolute jewel in the crown of the Berkshires. Oh, yeah. Also, you can enjoy good, clean fun at a Steeple Cats ball game or visit the Cascade Waterfall or the Hoosick Tunnel or Windsor Lake, all of those really enjoyable places in North Adams. But my snapshot of the soft white underbelly of North Adams has a special allure. Yeah, for the adventurous man or woman, this could be the kick you've been missing side-by-side -side dive bars and a street named Hooker. I mean, until you've tried it, don't punch it down. Uh, I'll tell you about uh, something else. I told you I have a lot to say, and I'm saying it. Stop it. Now, uh, back in the good old days, way back in the good old days, I uh, parked my Chevy Vega. You probably don't remember the Chevy Vega, but there actually was a Chevrolet Vega. I had one. Well, I parked it one day back in the good old days. I took my Taylor Dane cassette out of my tape deck. I zipped up my members only jacket. And then entering my apartment, my landline phone had been ringing, 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 ringing. I got there just in time to find out that it was Radio Shack telling me my Tandy TRS 80 was ready for pickup. <laughs> yeah. So, I got back into my Chevy Vega, switched on Taylor Dane, singing, Don't Rush Me. And, uh, well, those were the good old days. Now, perhaps, according to you, that's an uninspiring memory. But to me, it had been one of those thrilling days of yesteryear. Uh, a note from my personal metaphysical department. Concerning you and me and all the rest of us on this planet, I say we are either a galactic experiment by an infinite higher power or we're just crabgrass growing out of a crack in the sidewalk. Maybe both. Maybe something boringly inconsequential in between. I am saying 
that in the gross national scheme of things, our ridiculous species is of no great shakes. So get over yourself. Now I have a piece of, uh, well I've been handed a, uh, a piece of, of news, just in. This just in, piece of news. Pay attention now. Uh, it could be important. Fourth grade students at an elementary school in Oregon set up 6,000 boxes of cereal and then knocked them down like dominoes. The cereal was to be donated to a local food bank, and a celebrity happened to be at the event who was anxious to eat some of the cereal. It was Reese with a spoon. Well, that's all I have for today. I'll come back another time. Uh, this is Herman Scuttle with one last thing to say. Rest in peace, Michael Houlihan.